This is a 2.5D platformer project inside of Godot 4, which we will be building from scratch together. I recently got first place in a game jam with some friends with this project specifically, and I thought I would share it with you guys and show you how to do it. This will cover the basics of how to set up a scene, how to add input with two different players on the same keyboard. This will be a local co-op game, so this will not be a multiplayer game with two computers. We'll go over and how to animate our players with a super simple state machine. We'll also go over different techniques on how to create levels using grid map and manual placement. We'll create different interactable objects, including levers, exploding boxes, and falling boxes. We'll also go over how signals work, how to create our own custom signal and send it out so that way we can use the lever with the exploding boxes. We'll also go over how to create a very simple stage manager where we can preload and load all our scenes and levels that we want to create in the future. Lastly, we'll polish the game a little bit, adding some nice text and making the game just look and feel a lot better. I hope you enjoy this course. If you do, check out my website, codingquest.com. I have many courses on there uh, and many to come. If you guys would like to see this course uh, polished out a little bit more with more uh, virtual effects and how to make something called Game Juice and just add more stuff to it, uh, let me know in the comments on how much you guys enjoy this video or course, or if you guys would like to see more videos like this. Also check out my channel, Coding Quests, and lastly, my game Soulforge, which I am currently working on. It is a 3D dungeon crawler, similar to Elden Ring, very Souls-like vibe. Without further ado, let's get started in the project and I'll see you guys at the end of this course. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is download and import all the asset packs. So the ones that we're gonna be using are KKit. So KKit has a lot of really cool 3D asset packs. Uh, you can see his page, KKit, on itch. Uh, I believe he also has on a few other platforms, uh, but itch.io is one of my favorite uh, platforms to find assets. Uh, so yeah, he has a lot of cool asset packs. He even has a platformer asset pack that came out recently. You can definitely check it out. Uh, but the one that we're going to be using from him is specifically the character pack. Again, the link will be down in the description. Or, of course, you can just search it up if you can't find it. So KKit character pack. So make sure you download that. In itch, you will just say, no thanks, take me to the download. If you only want the free version, if you want to pay for it, go for it. It's a really cool pack. I have it. And then the next two or three asset packs that we're going to use are from Kenny. Kenny has his own website. He's also on itch. Uh, but I prefer to download from his website. It's a very cool website and it's pretty clean. You can find all his assets and games and tools that he has. They're very, very cool. Uh, but the three that we're going to be using are the platformer kit. So make sure we download that. You can continue without donating. We'll also download the conveyor kit and the prototype kit. Once you have all the files, uh, we simply need to extract them. So we can simply open all of them and you can find all the models in here if you'd like to do it that way. Uh, or we can simply just extract files and we can extract it to our desktop or wherever you are and just hit okay once you've done that and you've created every file and extracted every file we now need to open up godot and create a new project so let's open up godot here and we're going to create a new full project here and we're going to call it co-op create create combustion cc and you can put it wherever you'd like. I'm gonna put it back in my desktop and you can see here the path is in the desktop. And for the renderer, we're going to probably either use Forward Plus or Compatibility. Uh, you can pick either or, but I'm gonna probably go for Forward Plus because we are gonna have 3D graphics. Uh, ideally, we just don't wanna pick mobile since uh, this is mostly for 2D stuff. Let's go ahead and pick Forward Plus and do uh, keep in mind, if you ever do wanna push this to GitHub, uh, keeping this on will be very useful. So. Let's just create. And now that we have our project, all we want to do is create a new folder here called assets. And what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this project here and select our folders that we just exported and bring them into our Godot project. All you need to do is just drag them in and it might take a second. But there we go. It'll now say re-importing assets. Once you have finally waited 10 years and got your coffee, we can now start um, making our project. And now you can see here that we have all our assets. And just to confirm that these are imported properly, we can go into one of these, let's say the KKit project, go to the assets, and we can go to the FBX, for example, and simply drag these in to our scene. And you can see 
that we now have. Actually, let's go to our character. You guys will take it to a lot cooler because it is. Boom, we have our character. Our first character in Godot, 3D model, and we can look around him. Now, if you're curious about the controls, we'll take a look at that in just a second. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at the controls and how we can navigate a 3D space. Uh, because in 2D, it's relatively simple. We can scroll in and out to zoom in and out. Uh, if we hold shift and middle click, we can move around uh, and we can obviously use these guys to go up and down. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now in 3D, it's a little more complicated. Uh, in order to move around or rotate, we can middle click and then move. Or if we want to move around in our screen, it's actually similar to 2D. We simply need to hold shift and then go up and down. And you can now see we can pretty much navigate around our scene comfortably as much as we want. Now, the idea in 3D is there's kind of a point that we rotate around. So if I just rotate around a point, you'll see there's kind of a point where we're rotating around. And when I hold shift and I move, that point moves. So when I rotate, it rotates around that new like point of origin, essentially. So that's essentially the idea. Uh, and we're going to try to kind of stay around the middle because that's where everything is. Now, what we're going to do first is get started with our first scene. Now, what are scenes? Scenes are kind of like levels, but think of them as packaged objects or packaged like boxes where we can put things inside of them, almost like a sheet of paper where we can start drawing on it. And the advantage of this is this is where our level will be. So if we actually delete our character, we can hit save, control S, and we, this thing will pop up where it says save scene as, and this is where we can save something. This will be our level zero. And we can simply save this into a new folder first, where we will say scenes. We will create new folder and say levels. So we might have multiple levels later. So this will be very useful to organize ourselves and hit save. Once we've done that, we can now see level zero. But if I hit play and even select current, if we hit play here, there's nothing here. Now, the worst part is, and this might be confusing, is if I drag my barbarian back in here, and I hit play, I still can't see my barbarian. Now, why is that? Now, by default, Godot will always launch into a 2D space. So our gray screen that we're seeing is actually here. So how the question is, how do we bring our like 3D stuff into our screen? Well, we need to add a camera 3D. And we can do that. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. We can do that by going to the plus button on the top left and hitting plus, search up camera, and you'll see that we have a camera 2D and a camera 3D. We're going to use camera 3D. Now, you can actually even see our preview over here where we can bring our camera out and we can move it around. And now if I hit play, we'll see our amazing barbarian. Now we can see that the scene is not super pretty. It's not amazing. And that's okay. We're going to change things up a little bit uh, to actually make things look a little better. Now, the way we make things actually look a little better is by adding something called a world environment. Now, you'll notice that the scene inside of my like world here is not the same when I hit play. And that's because inside of our scene, inside of our edited Godot project, there's actually this thing, toggle preview uh, environment. If I turn this off, this is what I see right when I hit play. This is something that allows us to essentially toggle a, a fake environment. But the question is, how do we create our own environment? Well, let's add a new node called world environment. Now you can see that this has toggled off automatically, and that's because we now have our own world environment to test in. Now we're going to create a new environment here. Go to the top right, new environment. Inside of this, we can go inside. And what we can do is go to background. Instead of a clear color, we're going to hit sky. And now that our sky is black, we're going to go to sky, create a new sky, go to sky material, and create a uh, procedural sky material. Now, it pretty much looks like what we had before, but the difference is when I hit play, now we can see our sky and everything. It looks a lot better. Uh, now, there is still a little bit more, which is lighting. Now, you'll see that from this angle, you kind of don't really see any lighting. There is kind of like some shadows here. Uh, there's like some light on his ear, uh, but when I hit play, right, like there's no lighting. It looks kind of gross almost, right? So the question is, how do we bring light? Well, there's actually quite a few different types of lighting in 3D. Now, the main ones are these ones, the ones under light 3D. Don't worry about these yet. 
let's just take a look at these ones. Now, directional light is the one that we're going to be using. So let's create that. Now, this is literally a sun. Think of it as a sun. Now, essentially, this will be like one light that goes in one direction. Now, you can basically pick which direction you want it to be. So we can pick it like by default, or we can go from up down. You can kind of see as this rotates, it essentially moves the lighting. Now, I'm going to keep it from basically from where we are to the to the player. So when I hit play, boom, we have lighting. And you can see the difference when I hit like hide that and when it's shown. It's very neat. So that's the idea about uh, directional light. Now, I want you to pause the video and I want you to take a look at what these other ones do, what OmniLight does and Spotlight and see if you can play around with them and change things about them. Hopefully you've unpaused the video and we can continue. So now that we have our barbarian, we have our camera, we have our world environment, we have a directional light, we need things to happen. First of all, let's go to node uh, 3D and rename this to level zero. What we're going to do here is we're actually going to add a new node called character body 3D. Fun fact, this used to be called kinematic body 3D or 2D. Now, the reason it was called that is because inside of our node 3D, if we find our bodies, we can find that there were or are several types of bodies. The main ones are static body, rigid body, and character body. Now, essentially, static body is something that doesn't move. Rigid body is something that moves, but it's basically like a ball. You can even see that the icon is like a ball. It has its own physics and built-in physics, and we will look at this a little later. Uh, but the main thing that we want to look at right now is character body 3D. We'll create that. And you'll see its origin point is at the middle, 0, 0, 0. That's what we want. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take our barbarian and drag him into the character body 3D. We're going to right-click our barbarian and make local. This will essentially bring in all the things from our barbarian into our local scene. Now, this is important, is that we want our barbarian in the transform to be 0, 0, 0. Why is that? Well, when I start moving things around... Like, let's say I drag something and I don't use these axes and I just move something around. That thing might not be what I want to move. Generally, when I move an object, I want to move the parent node. So the parent node is the essentially the node that is at the top of the hierarchy. Think of the barbarian as the child node, because that's what it is. And we don't want to move around the barbarian. We want to move this guy. Now, the question is, how do I make this simple and make sure I don't accidentally select something or whatever, right? Well, it's actually quite easy. We can go to our character body 3D. Let's rename him to layer one. Right click, save branch as scene. We went to our scene here. New folder, player or players. Hit save. And we can now click this little uh, window thing. And here we go. He's our second scene. Now, essentially what's happening is that this scene is inside of this one, but this one node is essentially just one node and we can't edit it inside of our level anymore. We can only edit it inside of the player, which is very useful because now things are more organized and I can not select things that I don't want to select. When I select my player and I move him around or rotate him, as you just saw, it only rotates the character body. Now, lastly, what we can do is add our collision shape 3D. Go to the shape on the top right. Go to the capsule. And we now have a capsule for our character. Now, you'll see, though, that the offset is a little under. So we're just going to move it up a little bit. Now we'll go to our player. We're going to add a script. But don't worry, we're not going to code anything just yet. We're going to go to template. Select the template, make sure it's the basic movement, and we're going to move our script into a new folder here called Scripts, New Folder, Layer. Hit OK into this and open and create. This will create a script with the basic movement for four directions. So it has a jump and uh, we can move on the X and Z axis. Now, don't worry too much about this just yet. We'll return to this in the next part. For now, we want to make things actually work. Because if we hit play, our character falls. So what, ha what is happening? Well, what's happening is in our script, there's actually gravity. So 
we need a ground. So let's do that by adding a static body. We'll add a static body 3D and we can add a collision shape. And we're going to make something, we're going to make a ground, but it's not going to be permanent. It's just for example, we're going to add a new box and simply extend this outwards. And there's our ground. Now you'll see that this is actually kind of transparent and that's because this ground, we can't actually see it in the game, but that's okay. So if we hit play, we now don't fall. But the cool part is we can now move around by hitting our arrow keys. And this is really cool because that is pretty much what we want. We can even jump up and down. All right, and that's it for our player setup. We now have learned how to set up a player with a simple script, with a floor, directional light, world environment, and camera 3D. Now, I want you to pause the video, and for the next part, before the before you continue in this series or this episode or this course, I want you to try importing a new player, player 2, any model you want, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to be using the mage one or the rogue, uh, one basically one of these two and one of these two, whichever one you'd like, uh, and basically repeat the steps that we just did for the player. So as a mini challenge, re-import the player, bring it in at player 2, and you should now have a new scene called player 2 instead of just player 1 with a different model. So this is the barbarian model, and I want you to import one of these other ones into the scene here. So that way we will have two. All right, good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next part.